Oh, that's me. <laughs> hey there, kiddos. Uda here. I'm back with another needle felting tutorial, but I wanted to preface this video with I'm sorry. I may have used the wrong camera and the video quality is pretty bad, unfortunately, which sucks because we made a like super, super cute Jack. So I debated just not uploading it, but I decided I would just, you know, put it out there. Maybe some people will find it good enough that they can follow along and help. But I am so sorry about that. Next time, we'll we'll be using the right camera. Trust you me. Trust me you. It was ugh, hours and hours of my life just to be like, oh, this footage is bad. Oh, that's not the right. Oh... So yeah, double double check your cameras, kids. Otherwise, it can lead to some problems. Anyway, I am Uda, and we are here with a needle felting tutorial. Today, we are going to make Little Jack from Animal Crossing. It is the Halloween season, so it seemed super appropriate. I hope you guys are excited. I had a lot of fun making this little guy, and I hope you guys will have a lot of fun making one of your own. And, uh, you know, the arbitrary, hi, I'm Uda, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, it means the world to me, we're trying to get to a thousand subs this year, and we are super duper close, but I need every single one of you. If this video was, uh, helpful, you enjoyed it, yada yada, drop a like, leave a comment, let me know if you have any ideas of things you'd like to see me needle felt in the future for tutorials with better camera quality. <laughs> All right, that's been enough of my uh, whole face stick. Anyway, let's get to Jack here. I hope you guys are ready. Now to get started, we're going to go through the materials you need. First, we need a dark purple, a light purple, a white filler, uh, a black, some orange, some green, a little bit of yarn or string. Obviously, your needle felting needle of choice. Uh, some little booties, some little, uh, finger covers to protect your fingers from being stabbed, and of course, our felting mat. All the good stuff. Now, we're gonna start out by taking that white filler wool, and we're gonna really spread it out, get it all nice and loose, and then we're gonna roll it up into a ball, stabbing it as we go along. And once we get it into a ball, we're gonna keep stabbing it until we get it to be nice and firm, but still squishy. Not, not too solid, but... Not too loose, you know? So once you get your white ball to the uh, texture and consistency, for lack of a better word, that you like, we are going to take the yarn or string or whatever you have, and we are going to wrap it around our ball and tie it a bit snugly so that it cuts into the ball on the sides a little bit. Once we have our knot there, we're going to wrap the long piece of string around the other way and tie that as well so we have a little bulging package, for lack of a better word. <laughs> but yeah, this is going to be the base of our pumpkin, and where the string is, that's going to create uh, the divots into the edges of the pumpkin. Now, moving right along, we're going to take our orange wool and we're going to spread it out a little bit and we are going to wrap that little white package that we just created and we are going to start stabbing the orange all over into that, that little package. <laughs> it's very strange to say. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to cover that completely with this orange wool, stabbing and stabbing. It might take a good while till it gets really firm and all becomes one uniform piece. And make sure uh, to go into those little indentations we made with the string and kind of uh, mark those in as well so we uh, know where they are for the future so we can keep those details. It's important. We put those details there for a reason, so we definitely want to keep them. So like I said, just stab into those indentations where the string cuts in a little bit and it'll help give your pumpkin a little bit more shape and a little bit more personality, if you will. All right, now that we have uh, attacked the pumpkin with our needle for, honestly, in my case, the better part of an hour, <laughs> it's finally become nice and firm and uniform, and it's, it's all just one solid piece now, not just like a, a white package wrapped in orange. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, you know, 
make sure it's tight and, you know, still a little squishy in the way I want it. And then we are going to move on to the next step, which will be the stem. So we're going to take that green wool and just get a little bit of that, spread it out, make it nice and loose. And then we're going to roll it up a little bit and stab it as we go. So we're going to roll and then stab a little bit, roll and then stab just so that the wool comes together and helps make that cylinder shape for us. Now, once we have our nice cylinder, we're just going to stab it and flip it around, stab it. But I want you to make sure to not stab into one end of it. See, I'm keeping my finger on one end of it. We're going to want that part to be uh, looser. We're going to pull that apart, and that's how we're going to attach the stem to the top of the pumpkin. So really just roll it around, stab it, stab it down from the top of one end. Go nuts. <laughs> Once it starts to feel firm and a bit together, you can take that end that we haven't been stabbing and start to pull the fibers a bit loose and out so that we have a place to attach it to the pumpkin. And then when you're ready, get the pumpkin, put it on top, see if you like the positioning. And we are going to start stabbing in that loose green wool around the bottom. We're going to kind of angle it inward so that we're poking it in underneath the stem. So that once it's all stabbed in there, you won't really see those green fibers at all. It'll just look kind of very uh, smooth going from the pumpkin to the stem. There won't be a lot of mixing colors. It'll look like two separate nice pieces. So just uh, work that around. And if you want, you know, make sure to keep going at from the top of the stem down into it too. To make sure you flatten out the top of it. Get a nice good stem shape. All right, now let's set the pumpkin aside and start working on the body. Get out your dark purple wool, pull it apart, make it nice and loose, and then we're going to fold over the bottom of one end, stab it a little bit, fold it over again, and then roll it up. So we're going to try to make a, a cylinder that is smaller at the top and larger at the bottom, the top being the part where the loose fibers are still. We're going to make this like triangle shape and that is going to be Jack's body. Make sure you keep the fibers at the smaller end nice and loose though. That's again what we're going to use to connect the pumpkin head to his body. Also, make sure you go at it from the bottom and flatten down the, the bottom of the cone-shaped cylinder because we want him to be able to stand up. So I'm making sure to flatten that out and smooth out all the sides and make sure the bottom is whider than the top. Now, after you've stabbed at it for a while and once you are happy with the firmness of it, start to pull apart the fibers at the, the smaller end, loosen them up, position them at the base of the pumpkin and we are gonna start attaching it. We're gonna do it similarly to how we did the stem where we're going to poke the fibers, the dark purple fibers into the pumpkin at an angle so that they go in underneath the rest of the body and uh, instead of having multiple colors kind of mixed together, it all uniformly looks like different pieces. It's very separated and it looks a lot cleaner that way. If, if, you, if you have trouble with it, if you're still new to needle felting, don't worry about it. It's, it's definitely a technique that might take a little while to get used to, but it's definitely good to practice. Now we are going to take two even pieces of the dark purple, smaller than what we used for the body, probably like half as much, maybe a little bit less. We'll set aside one of those and these are going to be the arms. Now we're going to take one of them and we are going to fold it completely in half so that all the loose ends are at one side. We're going to stab the bottom that has the non-loose ends a little bit. Then we're going to fold that over and roll it up the same way that we did with the body so that we can kind of make that cone shape where one end is larger and the end with the loose fibers is smaller. So just uh, stab at that, make sure to leave the fibers loose at the smaller end and just roll it around, stab at the top of it and uh, make sure to flatten it out so that it's a nice cone shape. Once you're happy with the shape and the texture, you can take it and we're going to hold it up against the body and we're going to see how we like it, if we like the size, the position. I'm pretty happy with how this looks, so I'm going to take those loose fibers, I'm going to pull them apart a bit more, and I am going to hold it up next to the side of the body where I want this arm to go and I'm going to start attaching it, stabbing in those loose purple fibers into the body. Now, since this is all the same color, 
we're going to really spread those purple fibers out and attach them all over. Like, it's going across the front, the back, down the side. We really want to just blend all of those loose fibers together with the rest of the body to get a nice secure hold on the arm. And then I'm going in with my single needle here around where the arm is specifically attached to the body just to kind of get a little bit more shape and detail and make sure that it is smaller up at the top than it is at the bottom. And I'm happy with the way it looks. All right, I am definitely pretty happy with the way he is looking so far. He is nice and even on the outside. The shapes are good. So now we're going to take that light purple wool we're going to get a little tiny wispy bit of it, and we're going to start to do the details on Jack's coat. So just take that wool and wrap it around his arm. I'm going to show you two methods on how to do this, by the way. So just wrap it all around his arm and start stabbing it. Just stab, stab, stab. Go, go nuts, you know? G give it a good 10, 15 minutes maybe of stabbing. Go in on the edges to really tuck in those loose fibers and also stab around the middle of that light purple wool. Make sure it is super secure and that's going to be the basis for how we do all of these details on his coat. Now is another method that you can use and that's what we're going to show you now. Okay, this one detail is looking good. Now this is a slightly more advanced technique. We're going to take a, the same wispy light purple piece and we're going to start tacking it in with our single needle slowly working our way around the arm just uh making sure to try and like I, I like to spin the needle around so the loose fibers will catch on the barbs of it and then stick it in so it'll adhere and then you kind of go back and forth to cover it up and make it more uniform with the excess fibers and if you run out just grab a little bit more of that wispy purple and lay it across and start attaching it to where uh, you left off. Spinning your needle and tucking it in, working your way around. And yeah, this is a bit more of an advanced technique. But if you do it correctly and if you practice it enough, it'll definitely give you more of a natural look to what your uh, the details that you're adding. Instead of how the first band looks just kind of like it's wrapped around, the second one feels a bit more like it is part of that dark purple. So we're just going to keep going around and stabbing at both of the little details that we added to make sure they're nice and secure on the coat. Now I am quite happy with how this is looking. The details are nice and securely attached. Everything is very uniform. What I'm going to go ahead and do is off camera I am going to do the other arm. So you guys just repeat the same process for the other side and let's meet back in a minute. Now that we've got both arms on, let's get another wisp of that light purple and start working on the details on the bottom of Jack's coat. We're going to work on the very, very bottom. So we're going to use that second, slightly more advanced technique. If you feel more comfortable with the first one, just wrap the purple all the way around the base and then stab it in. Otherwise, follow along with me, slowly working the loose fiber in and around and just, you know, twisting your needle, stabbing it in. When you run out, get a little bit more purple, lay it across. It's a, it's a very relaxing process. <laughs> just don't force it, you know, just, you know, take it easy, work with the fiber, have a good time. So we're going to go all the way around to the base of that coat and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to clean it up a bit, make it look real nice. All right, now that we've got that very bottom detail done and it looks good, you're going to want to repeat that about two more times to get the look we're going for. I'm going to not show that on camera for the sake of this video not being insanely long, but basically just wrap another bit of purple around and then do it a third time so you have three little light purple stripes at the very bottom of Jack's coat. Now we're going to get to work on the face. So first off, let's get two really small wispy pieces of the black. And then about where I want the eye, I'm going to make a little dent with my needle before I start stabbing one of those little pieces of black in there. We're just trying to make a nice little circle. So I'm going to take the fiber and I'm kind of going to be wrapping it around, stabbing it in, flipping it over to the other side of the eye, stabbing it in just so we get a nice full coverage 
and a nice round shape. And uh, yeah, make sure you just stab it all in. If there's a little bit excess that you can't get in that you're not happy with, you can always take a pair of scissors and just cut it off on the top. Once you're happy with your first eye, we're going to repeat the process. Just make a little indent with your needle where you want the eye to go. Get your little wisp of black wool and start poking it in right where you made that indent. Stab it around in a nice little circle and then take that excess fiber and just flip it from side to side, poking it in, making sure you get a nice circle, nice coverage, and uh, if you're lucky, the eyes will be kind of indented, which is why we did the dent first. We're trying to make them a little bit sunken in like, uh, like a jack-o'-lantern would be. All right, I think those eyes are looking pretty good. Nice, round, a bit sunken. I think it's about time we get started on the nose. Now, Jack's nose is basically just a little oval. So what we're going to do is get another little tiny wisp of black, make a little indent in between the eyes and below where the nose is going to go. And in a similar style to the way we stabbed the black in for the eyes, we're kind of going to move that excess wisp of wool back and forth and poke it in until we can get a nice little oval shape and you know same with the eyes if there's a bit of excess wool you can't get in feel free to go over it with the scissors it really just is the same process as the eyes but in a slightly different shape now that we've got the nose ready it's time for the mouth we're going to do the same thing we did with the rest of the facial features. We're going to take our one needle and we're going to indent in the shape of a sort of smile starting below the outer edge of his eye and going around over to the outer edge of the other eye. Once we're happy with the dent, we're going to take a wisp of the black fiber and we're going to start poking it in. Stabbing from the corner where we started the mouth under the eye and going down and around under the nose and up to the other corner of the eye poking in that excess loose fiber if there's a bit left over just flip it back and poke it in the back the way you came basically so we can get a nice thick full coverage mouth if there's still a little bit too much fiber you feel free to just tear it off you know gently so you don't rip out the whole mouth you pulled in but just, you know, you can just pop it off. All right, I think Jack's smile is looking pretty good. It's a nice, thick black line. I think it's time we start doing the teeth. Now just grab a little teeny wispy of wool and we're gonna start in the middle below the nose and above the mouth. We're gonna connect it to the mouth, but not to the nose. We're just gonna make a little kind of uh, hill <laughs> above his smile. That's going to be the, the middle gap area of his jack-o'-lantern smile. And then we're going to go to the left of that and use another little teeny little wisp and make another sort of little hill on the smile. Once we're happy with that, we're going to take yet another teeny little wisp and go to the right side and add another little hill out of the black fiber so that we can make his toothy grin. Because, I mean... Every jack-o'-lantern has a wonderfully toothy grin, especially Jack. Uh, how else is he going to eat all that candy? I mean, come on. So we're just going to poke it in, shape it, you know, stab it in at some different angles to get the shape you like. If you feel like you need a little bit more fiber, grab another little wisp of black and feel free to work that in. I'm going to, you know, poke at this a little bit more here. But honestly, we're basically done. You can fiddle with the face to your heart's content to get the shapes just the way that you want them. But this is Jack. You know, this is you. You just needle felted Jack with me. Congratulations. I hope it is adorable and you love him as much as I love mine. Honestly, needle felting is a really fun, relaxing process. And you're going to make really cool little dudes. You, know, you can make all sorts of amazing things, flowers, trees, sculptures, animals. It is great. I love it. Again, I'm real sorry that the video quality was a little meh, but thank you for bearing with me and watching to the end. Remember, if you haven't already, please, please subscribe, leave a like, drop a comment, let me know what you'd like me to felt in the future, and thank you so, so much for watching this video. I'll see you guys next time.